Hey, what's up? Brother Bastone here. So before we get into today's subject, just a quick disclaimer. Uh, this video is not going to be like a, um, a technical academic style tutorial. Uh, it's basically just me trying to explain my thought process when I'm drawing uh, human figures, like trying to point out the, the small things, the, the practical things that help me when I'm drawing. So it, it's a lot more free form than most of the tutorials out there on YouTube, but I hope that you still get something out of it. Okay, so first let's start by breaking down the human body into simple, uh, easy to use building blocks. Usually everyone does that, like when you're drawing a human figure, you use uh, simplified shapes to represent the different parts of the body. And everybody uses different shapes, so I'll show you what I use, and they're pretty simple. For the head, very simple, I'll use a circle shape for the, uh, the top of the skull. So when I say top of the skull, it's basically, uh, I use, uh, I visualize, when I see the circle, I visualize everything except for the uh, lower jaw. And then when I want to um, see like which way this uh, head is facing, I'll add guidelines for a, uh, a lower jaw, maybe something like this. Usually it's this sort of uh, kind of arrow shape. So the, the reason why I use this is because this gives me, uh, like the, 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 this pointy shape here gives me like the, the line of symmetry of the face, like this line here, the median line of the face. Uh, and these angles here give me like the, uh, the, the placement of the jaw. So I know that, uh, that based on this circle and this uh, sort of uh, arrow shape for the lower jaw, I know where the face, uh, where the head is facing and I know, um, I know all, all the angles that I need to know. The next building block that I use is for the uh, rib cage or um, like not, not only the rib cage, but sort of a combination of the, the shoulder line, like the width of the shoulders and the rib cage. And it's a shape kind of like this. Maybe something like that. And then this line up here, uh, in my mind, represents like the width of the shoulders. So like this from here to here is basically the, the like the shoulder line, the shoulder width of this, uh, this figure. And uh, then at the bottom of this shape, I'll draw this kind of curve. And that curve uh, represents basically like the, the lower edge of the ribs, like the lowest ribs of the rib cage, even though like anatomically speaking, they're not exactly uh, placed there. And if I was to draw like a realistic shape for a rib cage, uh, it would be a lot like rounder and a lot more narrow. But like I said, it's not, this is not actually a rib cage that I'm drawing. It's like a combination of the shoulder width plus a sort of uh, line here to place the, uh, the lower edge of the, the ribs. And the reason why I, I draw this curve, and I use it for a bunch of different things, and we'll, we'll see later exactly uh, what I use it for, but the main reason why is because it helps me uh, find the line of symmetry of, um, of this shape. So for example, if you use, um, a lot of people use that sort of beanbag method to draw the, the torso, uh, where you have like a, uh, a big blob for the, uh, the rib cage, and you then you draw like a smaller blob for the pelvis, and then you sort of uh, link the two together, and you have your uh, your um, your torso. But the problem with that, at least the problem that that I've had with that, and the, and the reason why I stopped using those kind of shapes is that sometimes when you draw the rib cage. If it's completely like an amorphous blob, like it doesn't have any edges, it doesn't have any um, very recognizable shapes, it's difficult. Like sometimes you 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 lose the orientation of your uh, like um, your your um, your figure. Like for example, if I if I want to find the the median line, like the line of symmetry of this rib cage, uh, if I want to know where this rib cage is facing, basically. It could be like the, the median line could be right here, so the rib cage could be facing this way, but it could just as well be right here, so the rib cage could be facing like this way. I, I don't know, like this is completely amorphous, there's nothing here, no angles that tell me where this is facing. So, for the same reason why I'm using this pointy shape for the head, like that tells me that okay, just from this one angle, I know that the head is facing that way. Here, this curve 
tells me that if I find the uh, the apex of the curve, like the top point of that curve, and I draw this line here connecting to that point, that that's my uh, line of symmetry. Like this is where the 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 median line of this shape is, and I know from that that the, this uh, shape is facing this way. The next building block that I use, the third one, is for the pelvis. Uh, and by the way, I'm keeping these separate. Uh, I'm like not connecting them on purpose so that they actually seem like building blocks because that's what they are. You can really take these separately. They, they are very uh, simple, minimalistic uh, geometrical shapes. And you can sort of practice uh, rotating them and like drawing them in different um, different positions and stuff. Like for, for example, again, just to give another example of what I mean by rotating and seeing them from different angles. If I draw a shape like this, uh, for for, uh, for this kind of ribcage uh, guideline. Again, I don't know where this is facing. This could be facing any direction. If I just add like a line, maybe right there, something like that. And I, I make the shape, I create this uh, lower edge of the uh, the ribs here. I know that my, my, uh, my median line, my line of symmetry is right there. And immediately I know that the ribcage is facing this way. So uh, yeah, like I was saying, it's uh, important to be able to uh, sort of rotate these all these simple shapes in, in 3D space. Um, and you can practice doing that very easily once you know these uh, these building blocks. Okay, so the, the third building block uh, that I mentioned is for the... Um, the pelvis and for that I use uh, again super simple I use three circles so one circle at the top where the the like the top of the pelvis sort of connects connects to the abdominal area and, uh, and two other circles below for where the the legs uh, connect to the, the pelvis so let me try to get this right and you you get just from these three circles you get that sort of uh, like the, the the shape of the the crotch area of like a human crotch basically. So this this line here would be behind there. So we're we're not going to see it, but this is still a circle. And then from here, like the legs connect there, and then the 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 torso connects there up here. But the, the building block is this, and again, uh, just by keeping the like the, the shapes, uh, having hard edges on the shapes and very simple shapes like a disc, you can always tell in 3D space where a disc is facing, like which direction it is uh, facing, and just from these three disc shapes, these three circles, I can very easily find the uh, line of symmetry, the median line of this pelvic uh, structure. So uh, yeah, that's my uh, building block for the pelvis. And finally, the last building block, the last shape, there's only four that I use when I'm drawing guidelines for uh, any figure, any pose. It's for the limbs. And uh, this is not really, uh, it's not really a building block. It's more of a, uh, it's more abstract of a shape, but it's, it's that sort of um, elongated uh, and curved V shape. Like I use these kind of shapes for the limbs, and again, we'll talk a lot more about the limbs in just a minute, in just a moment. But this is uh, this is what I use to draw the limbs. It's a, I call it a V shape. I don't know what else to call it. It's like a stretched and curved V shape, and the, the curvature and the, the the size varies a lot uh, depending on what part of the limbs I'm drawing, but I'll, I'll get into into that in a moment. Okay, so now that we have our four building blocks, how do we put them together? Like that's the, the most difficult part. So I'll, I'll try to give you my whole thought process, like how I proceed and how I link these different building blocks together to create, uh, well, pretty much any, any pose that I can think of. So I usually start with uh, this circle here, like this circle that I showed for the head. Without even drawing the, the, the arrow for the lower jaw, I'll start with just a simple circle. And uh, I'm not even drawing the, the, the jaw yet. And after that, I'll, uh, I'll, um, I'll go to this line here, like the line from one shoulder to the other. I call it the shoulder line. I don't know if there's a technical term for it. Like anatomically speaking, there's nothing linking one shoulder to the other uh, directly. Like it's a bunch of um, different muscles and, and uh, bones in there. Like there's no direct uh, like link there. But I like to use this line, this uh, shoulder line. 
because it allows me to kind of visualize uh, things like posture very easily. So for example, if you can visualize this circle as a head, and then if I, if I draw uh, a line like this, if this is, if this is the, the shoulder line, like you imagine one shoulder here, one shoulder here, you get an idea of a pretty like neutral posture. Now if I do the same thing, like I draw the same kind of circle shape for the head, but this time I'll curve the line a lot and I'll place it like behind the head kind of, so maybe something like this. Immediately you can imagine that this posture right here, this, this kind of shape will be a lot more like hunched over and it, 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 will, it will be a completely different pose and a completely different posture than uh, this one. And you can convey a lot of things with, with posture, a lot of character, a lot of personality. And I find that using this line, the shoulder line, uh, and curving it and sort of stretching it and trying to play with it, you can achieve a lot of uh, things with it. So for example, if we continue um, adding the, uh, the, the, the whole ribcage to, uh, to these two poses here. So just a very neutral pose on this one, but this one here, We'll have to curve the back there, like curve the the uh, the rib cage sort of inward a bit more, maybe even more than that. And then with our uh, with this bottom curve of the ribs, you can see that just by placing that in 3D and visualizing that as like a 3D thing. Uh, we get a, a, a better idea of how uh, like this torso here is positioned compared to this one. Like this is a much more straight up uh, good posture. This is a more sort of hunched over posture. So that's why I like to begin with the, the circle for the head and then the shoulder line. Like maybe the, if we have a, like a side view here, the shoulder line could look something like this. And then again, you would have a posture that would be completely different. Well, this one is again kind of uh, hunched over, but you get the idea. So th that's my first step, the, the circle for the head and the line uh, be that goes between the two shoulders. So my next step in each of these poses would be to decide uh, where the head is facing. So basically adding this little uh, jawline here, this arrow shaped jawline. <clears throat> So um, usually the thing that I try to avoid is to have the torso face the exact same way uh, as the head. Like having the, 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 the head face forward and the torso face forward exactly in the same direction, it usually results in some kind of boring poses. So I try to avoid that. So let's see, <clears throat> for example, here in this one, let's say that the, the face, he's looking like slightly to uh, his left here. So we'll draw the arrow slightly facing to the left. So I'm imagining the, the median line of the face here, the line of symmetry of the face, and then we'll just add our little angles here on the side to represent the jawline. And th that creates like a, just a, like a, th this is just with one circle and one uh, uh, arrow like this, you pretty much create the shape of a skull. Like if you, if you can imagine what the skull looks like, uh, this is pretty much what it is. Like you have your lower jaw down here, and then the the uh, the bulbous shape of the skull back there. So that's what we're doing. We're just adding. Uh, we're fi trying to figuring out trying to figure out which way the the head is facing. So here in this one, let's say that the body is facing this way. So we'll turn the head the other way so that it's not like that type of. He could even be looking like over his shoulder. Actually, that could be an interesting pose. So we'll draw the. Uh, the arrow of the jaw facing kind of that way there and then our median line of the face is there and then the the neck in that situation we, we would have to move the uh, the head a little bit to uh, to link the uh, the neck here like it would be uh, the the head is a little bit too too far forward for this pose but for this for this uh, purpose here just for this demonstration we'll, we'll uh, just leave it we don't need, I, I usually don't draw the neck yet at this point. 
And then uh, this one, let's say that the um, the face is uh, kind of looking up a little bit, maybe, like maybe something like this. So we draw the arrow to show that the face is like looking kind of this way. Add our little angles for the jaw. And uh, if we need to add the median line, the line of symmetry in the middle of the face, that connects, you can see that it connects every time to this, uh, the, uh, the tip of the arrow, like that's the, 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 the point of symmetry in the face. The next building block that we have to connect here is the pelvis, like the, the, our three circles. Um, I'll just do the, the, this middle one here because it's a, a very neutral pose, so uh, it's easier to, uh, to demonstrate on this one. So first circle here. We know that the the, um, the uh, rib cage, the, the the torso is kind of facing slightly to the uh, right of the character. So we can do the same with the pelvis. Make it face like this. This would be our median line here. So it's kind of facing slightly to the right as well. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Like. Um, the the proportions like the the distance between the um between the rib cage and the pelvis that's something that you just have to uh, kind of uh, learn how to figure out yourself uh, and then you can just uh, connect the two together like this so we have our pelvis our rib cage and the uh, head and something that is worth uh, noting uh, we might as well talk about talk about that now like differences between uh, female bodies and male bodies. I'll just uh, erase these other um, poses here so we can have a, a female example here. So let's do the, the same process for a, uh, a female figure. So we'll start with that circle there, then the, uh, the line for the, the shoulder width. The difference is that for females that, that width, like the distance from here to here, is a lot smaller. So usually it can be measured in um, in like uh, sizes of heads. I always forget exactly what it is. I think it's for males, it's like the, the shoulder width is like two lengths of heads or something like that. I know that there's a measure. I, I don't know exactly what it is, but you can you can look it up if you want. The point is that it's much shorter. So we'll, we'll draw a much uh, narrower torso here. Uh, that's the, the, the first difference. So usually when you um, when you look at, for example, like superhero comics or stuff like that, the, <clears throat> in male characters, the width of the shoulders is really exaggerated a lot. Like you can you can push that as much as you'd like if you want to have like a really uh, muscular, wide shouldered looking character because it creates the, the typical sort of V shape of the, uh, the male um, torso, the male upper body. Uh, but with females, if, if you uh, widen the shoulders too much, it, it tends to look kind of uh, weird. So we'll keep the shoulders pretty uh, narrow. And then the uh, the other difference that I try to keep in mind, actually let's do the same thing here with the face. So we draw our arrow shape. And um, like here, the, the uh, these angles, uh, at the uh, edges of the uh, lower jaw here, if you make them too angular on females, they can tend to look weird as well. So uh, I usually would just uh, curve those a little bit more. Um, I don't know why I'm adding ears on this one. I guess we might as well add some ears. Okay, um, the, the neck is actually uh, also a pretty big difference between female and male. Uh, bodies like with with males at least the way that i tend to draw them uh, like if i want to differentiate male and female body i'll draw a much more angular like the, the way the neck connects to the torso like this angle right here i'll make that a lot more uh, angular whereas with a female i'll try to curve that a bit more like this and um, make the uh, the traps, the trapezius muscles back there, like the, the ones that wrap around the neck, make the, those less prominent. 
like these things like the this triangle right here these two sort of triangles that you see from the front uh, they are muscles that kind of wrap around and they uh, they go all the way back behind uh, on each side of the, the spine but uh, yeah less emphasis on those on the on the female neck so um shorter or um, narrower uh, shoulder line first thing then the the neck uh, less angles and less prominent uh, traps and then the third thing would be to angle the um, the pelvis a little bit forward so um, what I mean by forward is like if you have a, uh, a male if you, if you have a, like a side view of the of a male pelvis like this and then you have the, the leg coming from there like it, it, it would be pretty uh, like parallel to the ground with the female body it tends to be angled forward a little bit more. Uh, I think it has something to do with like childbirth or something. I'm not sure exactly what the anatomical reason for that is, but the angle is is slightly different, and it also accentuates the uh, accent. It accentuates the uh, the curvature of the back here, like this this angle back here, this angle tends to be a lot more accentuated with females whereas males it's uh, like it's pretty much just uh, you can it's not a straight line but it's a lot less uh, less accentuated so you have the pelvis angled forward and a more accentuated uh, curvature of the back so yeah here we need to uh, angle the pelvis forward like this so we'll just do that like that and usually the, the pelvis is also wider like the the proportions between if you look at the male proportions the uh, shoulder line is usually wider than the uh, the, the hips with females it tends to be different with the hips being the wider wider uh, wider building block so I'll just uh, resize that a little bit here to make that more uh, obvious. And then obviously, instead of creating this uh, V shape, it creates more of the hourglass shape. Okay, so let's talk about limbs a little bit. And I think there are two key elements that are really important to understand when, when uh, drawing limbs. So for the first one, we'll just draw like a, an arm and a leg, um, like a side view of an, of an arm and a side view of a leg here, because that's when you see uh, the overlap of the muscles in, in those limbs. And uh, understanding that overlap is really important. It's something that you see a lot in, in uh, like a beginner mistake that, that people make. They will draw muscles sort of next to each other. Uh, like if, if they're drawing like a sort of big muscular arm like a guy flexing or something they'll draw like one muscle here and then that muscle ends and right after that the next muscle begins and you get this sort of bubbly muscle effect that looks very unnatural and that's because muscles are not next to each other in the human body they overlap and they interlock a lot and that's uh, specifically very visible in limbs um, so let's try to draw like a kind of muscular arm seen from the, the side here. So let's say that this here is the, the shoulder and our shoulder muscle sort of the uh, deltoid extends down there. So that's like a, that sort of diamond shape of the, uh, the shoulder muscle. So instead of thinking like I'm going to draw the biceps and triceps next to that, you have to think almost like I'm going to pull the the other muscles from under that that uh, that deltoid from under under that um, shoulder muscle. So from from behind that muscle, I'm going to sort of make it seem like they overlap, and we, we're going to add a little bump here for a, a biceps. Same thing here for the, uh, the triceps back there. So you can see here that, for example, this, this uh, forearm muscle here, instead of just ending it there and thinking, okay, the, there's some kind of muscle there, 
just pull it out and sort of extend it and interlock it between the uh, the other muscles like you, you you see this muscle here extending up here and being locked between the the triceps and the biceps instead of being just next to each other and same thing for the uh, the shoulder muscle here it's sort of this muscle here becomes locked interlocked between these two muscles like it's all a series of interlocking uh, muscle groups and even the um, the triceps back here back, the back here actually ex does extend all the way to the uh, um, to the elbow but you can even push it further than that like keep keep overlapping it uh, all the way down the the, the forearm and um, yeah, it's just important to understand that it's not muscles next to each other, it's muscles overlapping each other and interlocking with each other. And the, the, uh, that sort of overlapping and interlocking phenomenon creates these kind of interlocking shapes, like you find these everywhere on the, on the human body, these sort of WM shapes. These sort of angular shapes where you have like one muscle sort of creeping over the other and the other muscles sort of uh, coming from from under other muscles so uh, that's the first thing i think that is really important to understand and it also occurs in the legs so um, let's just take this uh, this side view of the pelvis here and try to draw a leg from there so when i see like uh, beginners trying to draw legs often they, they'll try to draw Something where you have the uh, the thigh, and then the thigh ends, and uh, just after the thigh, the uh, the calf begins, and same thing then with the muscles in the in the arm. Actually, what happens in in the in the leg is that the the thigh and the calf sort of overlap, with the uh, the um, thigh being on top of the uh, on top of the calf to to some extent. You you'll see what I mean. So here, if we draw the uh, the the V shape again, we'll draw. We'll use the the V shapes, the curved V shapes for the thigh. Looking at it from from the side, that kind of shape. Um, what I do at that point is that the the tip of the V is always going to be the the kneecap. Like I always accentuate the kneecap because that helps me. Like having this shape, this very angular sort of kneecap shape helps me place the the calf and connect the calf to the to the thigh because like i said they they overlap they're on top of each other so the thigh here comes on top and then from behind from behind the uh, the thigh you start drawing your calf and i'm trying to exaggerate the the curvature again to uh, to uh, to to uh, use these v shapes so you would have like a v shape maybe like this and you can see that again we find these sort of interlocking shapes uh, in these interlocking lines these interlocking muscles they're not like the thigh and the calf are not next to each other they're on top of each other like they overlap and they interlock and the second important thing about limbs and uh, probably even more important than the whole overlap and interlock thing is that limbs are not straight lines and I think that's uh, something that a lot of beginners uh, struggle with and, and they think like, why do my poses look so stiff? It's because you're drawing straight lines for limbs. But limbs are, you have to think of them as uh, like curved 3D, uh, 3D shapes. And that's why I use these shapes for my building blocks. So I'll give you an example here. If we try to add uh, arms to this guy here, I'm going to try to exaggerate the, the curvature as much as possible, but in, in, in this, from this angle and in this pose, I would think of the arm as a sort of S-curve. So the, the curve coming from the elbow, from the um, shoulder to the elbow, I would curve like outward maybe. Kind of like this. And again, these are just guidelines, just construction lines. Um, um, obviously, I would flesh these out later with muscles and stuff. But um, 
as a guideline I'm trying to keep them as, as curved as possible and here the the tip of the the V shape just like here the tip the tip of this V shape was the the elbow and the tip of this V shape is the the kneecap uh, I'm trying to think of this as like the the elbow here and then uh, since this one is curving in this direction the the forearm I would probably curve in the other direction and maybe do something like this And if we just uh, flesh it out a little bit. And you can see again, the, the way that I overlap these V shapes, like you have one V shape here, and then the second V shape, I'm starting it from behind here. Like I'm, I'm already trying to, I'm not even drawing muscles, but I'm already starting to overlap and interlock these two V shapes into each other. So then we will have an arm here that looks like this. I'm not going to flesh that out too much at this point because I want the, the V shapes to stay visible. But you can see that this is definitely not a straight line. Like this is an S curve. This is uh, not the most pronounced S curve. I could have exaggerated that more. But it is definitely not a straight line. Um, and you can do the same thing here with this arm. Maybe we'll do um, what kind of pose. Maybe he's like flexing this arm. So this V shape, the V here, I'll curve it uh, up like this. And I'm thinking the tip of the V here is the elbow. And then the other V shape, I'll shape like that and sort of overlap and interlock it with the first V shape. And flesh, flesh them out a little bit. And maybe accentuate the uh, angle of the, uh, the elbow there. Raise the uh, shoulder muscle a little bit since the, the whole arm is raised. That's going to push the uh, that shoulder up. Something like this. Th this is obviously not a... Uh, not, not, this is a really quick example because I'm trying to uh, not take too much time. But you can see the curve, the curvature of the limbs. So this here is an S curve. This is like two C curves, but they're they're definitely uh, not like straight lines. And now for the legs, we follow the same logic. So remember, we need to curve uh, the legs. They're not straight lines, and we need to make them overlap, just like uh, like overlap the muscle structure, just like we did here. And uh, remember the importance of the uh, the reference point that is the the kneecap. That's where I know that behind that, that's where I draw the, 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 the calf from. So um, fr from this angle, from a front angle, you also kind of need to remember that they're going to curve uh, not only like in this kind of S curve, like if, if we're looking at the, the legs from the, from the side, the, the S curve is like, uh, like this. Uh, but from the uh, the front, it's kind of different because the um, the, th the thigh bone here is already kind of curved uh, like this, like it comes out at an angle from the the pelvis, and then it kind of curves. So you you kind of need to remember that curve, and you also need to um, with with the way that I draw like the building block that I use for the pelvis. Um, it's important to understand that. The, the legs do not come out like straight out of the, the edges of that cir circle. Like the, the, they're connected, they, they extend uh, further up than the, than the circles. Like the circles are just sort of a, a rough indicator of, of the, um, the pelvic structure, but you, you don't have to like pull the legs straight out of that. They need to uh, like come out of the, the, the pelvis in a more organic way. So let's curve that into a sort of V shape again. And then when you have, we have the, this point here, like this uh, kneecap reference point, we know that we're going to draw the uh, calf from behind that to make them sort of overlap. So we go from, we sort of pull it from behind there and curve it again to follow the uh, building blocks that we're using curved elongated V shapes and from there 
I'm trying to again exaggerate the the curvature of everything, but uh, obviously maybe this is a bit too much curvature. And there we go, we have one leg. And then when we're drawing the other leg, we need to keep in mind that when you're standing in a uh, sort of neutral pose like this, like a, a relaxed standing pose, um, your feet are not going to be facing the same direction. That's a mistake that I see people like beginners make a lot. Uh, when they have just a character standing there, they might draw their feet perfectly parallel, their legs perfectly parallel and straight, and that also creates uh, a very stiff pose. So, for example, I know that this this uh, foot here might be facing like kind of this way, but I know that this other leg here is going to be facing a completely different direction. So let's try to do that here. So curve it uh, outward for the for the for the uh, the thigh. Create a, a V shape. This V shape here into the knee, and I'm really accentuating the. Uh, the the kneecap in this in this uh, in this case not afraid to make it a really angular visible shape and then from behind that i'll draw the calf and try to curve it in the opposite direction so you have one v shape there one v shape there and they are creating this s curve that you find here and that you find in all limbs pretty much and that's going to be the uh, guidelines for the legs and from here the um, the feet uh, the way that i do feet is actually really easy i like the uh, these kind of pointy shapes i like shapes that show me what direction uh, something is pointing actually these legs are kind of short uh, so i might just grab them and use the magic of digital art to uh, cheat a little bit so the way I do feet, uh, or at least construction lines for feet, is that I'll draw uh, pretty much a, like an arrow, uh, like a pointy shape, uh, just like for the the jaw, or just like for uh, a lot of other things that I draw. Like I'll draw the uh, the front of the foot first, like that. Uh, I know that this one will be facing this way, and then I'll draw the front of this foot here, like that, and this one will be facing this way then um should let me let me just make the length of each leg kind of the same i'm trying to imagine like what kind of ground plane this uh, character is standing on like i'm thinking something like this probably so i have these two arrows sort of pointing where the uh, the feet are going to be pointing, and then after that, I'll, I'll maybe I'll add like a little line for the uh, heel on both of them, and you you can start you see the uh, the the feet already forming, and then a little curve inward between the arrow and the heel, a little curve up uh, like a uh, outward curve for the. Uh, top of the foot and then just connect the calf same thing here connect the calf curve on the inside curve on the upper part of the foot and you have guidelines for feet So that's pretty much it, that's my uh, thought process, my uh, method for drawing guidelines for the human body. And it all starts from these four building blocks that I tried to simplify here as much as possible. Um, it's my personal method, like I know that uh, even if it works for me, it's not going to work for everyone, so it's always good to try to find your own building blocks 
your own methods, your own ways of doing things. But uh, I still hope that you found something interesting in this video. If you have any questions, any thoughts, let me know. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If you would like to support this channel and help me make more videos, check out this Patreon link on screen right now or in the description below where you can get all of my PSD files as well as real-time versions of all my videos.